All right, we are live, and I don't like how tilted the screen is, so let me fix that with some puck screens, because that's how we do it when Ugo isn't here. Let's fix this. Is it this side that needs raising? Nope, it's the other side. That was apparent real fast. There we go. Puck screens fixed it. All right, what is up, everyone? Excited to be here. Uh, excited to stream. It's been a little bit. Have had some, you know, holiday stuff going, but I uh, hope everyone has had a great holiday season thus far and will rock in the new year with a lot of good brew, tasty coffee. So today we're going to a couple out of coffees that I have recently uh, acquired, not required, though I do require them. We're going to cup some coffees today. And the reason is because I don't think enough people are cupping at home. And why do I think, what, why do I think cupping is important? Why do I think that it can actually help? Why do roasters do cuppings? Why is that such a standard? Well, it's very simple. When you cup coffees, you're never going to extract too much. It's an impossibility with it being strictly immersion. So as long as you have a decent grind size, you're going to get around a 20% extraction, maybe 21. Uh, the other thing is, is you're not going to struggle with channeling. So you're going to get kind of the full essence of the coffee. So that means whenever you're cupping the coffee, if you're tasting off notes, likely uh, it's going to come out in your filter or espresso. Um, but also one of the big things I use as a barometer while I'm cupping coffees is that I take into account that while cupping, um, I can tell whether a coffee will taste better or shine more on filter or espresso. I might taste it and say, wow, that would be a really nice filter cup. Wow, that might taste really good on espresso. Or, wow, that's going to be a hard one to make taste good. So I need to figure out my go-to recipes when a coffee is not very good. And that way you're not wasting a ton of beans trying to dial in a coffee that may not be great. If you're cupping and you realize this tastes kind of baked, well, then guess what? You can not waste a ton of coffee and instead you can go straight to those those more forgiving types of recipes. Like for instance, one that I use is with an AeroPress. I'll do a one to four ratio with 30 grams of coffee. I'll do 120 grams of water at 78 to 80 degrees Celsius, really coarse grounds. And I'll let it sit for a minute, minute and a half with heavy, heavy, heavy agitation. Then I press and add 80 grams of water and it makes even trash coffees taste palatable. So it will save you a lot of time and a lot of beans when you're trying to dial in. So anyway, let's go ahead. I'm going to, I'll keep talking obviously as I begin to weigh out all these coffees, but we'll go through each one. What I have done is I have all of my cups numbered one through 14. Okay. Yes, that's a lot of coffees. I probably am biting off more than I can chew for a life, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it because it could potentially at some point be helpful to someone watching. And that's what we're here for. We're here to put out some good content um, with someone who has a lot of experience cupping. I've cut thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of bowls in my life. And so um, we are going to, yeah, just go straight for it. So I have each one numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I'm going to weigh out all of these beans over here. And I'm going to have these in a specific orientation on my back bar, 1 through 14, so it coincides with the one that it's in. And then at the end, and I'm going to shuffle them all up after I grind them and they're manageable. Shuffle them to the best of my ability. It's not a perfect blind because I'm here, but I'll be talking and looking in the camera as I do it. So I'm telling you with my ADHD, I'm not going to know where what is. Then I'm going to take notes as I'm cupping and we'll see which ones I like best for filter. We'll see which ones I like best for espresso. We'll see if I detect any roast defects or if there's one that I really enjoy or think is really complex or really, you know, whatever it might be. And we'll, we'll just talk about this process of cupping because again, it is very important to have the skill set and you can just use eight to 10 grams of beans and figure out how you should brew it. That is what the big win of this is. Not only do you get a time where you're more so scrutinizing the cup, whenever you're cupping, I mean, it is an intentional process where you're trying to really figure the coffee out as opposed to brewing a V60 going, eh, it's not that great, but I need my coffee. You're not really scrutinizing it in order to make improvements. So uh, cupping is a great way with very low waste, of eight to 10 grams, one and done, that you'll be able to uh, kind of scrutinize a coffee again, or not again, but I should mention that it, with a single cup as opposed to two cups, which you should ideally do two to three cups per coffee, is because you may get a single bean that's defective or, um, or tipped or scorched or whatever in your small sample, and that could skew the bowl. So that is something to keep into account in today's video using all extremely high quality roasters. I'm ex If I see any uh, obvious defects, I'll pull them out while I'm weighing them out. But anyway, all right, let's now for real get into it. I'm going to first start by introducing each coffee as I weigh them out, then I'll grind them and then uh, we'll mix them up and that's how we'll get going. So the first one I'm going to do today 
I received Onyx's new Ethiopia Yaye Chirico Red Honey. So it's a red honey process, which uh, you don't see these very often anymore. Essentially, it's a style of honey processing where you have um, where you have uh, uh, different layers of the amount of mucilage that are left on the seed. So typically in honey process, you pulp the cherry, which has the mucilage layer on, and you let that ferment out in the sun. Well, with black honey, yellow honey, red honey, these are different amounts of mucilage that are left intact. Okay, so we're going to take this. It is um, not, these are all going to be sealed essentially because uh, I just got them recently. I think I've, I've one or two are open maybe, but uh, yeah, so we're going to do just a little cut here. I like to just cut my bags like this, just a little opening. Don't need a big opening. Boop, just like that. All right, here we go. We'll weigh out our first. I do 12 gram doses in these bowls because they fit close to 200 grams of water or 200 mils. So I'm going to do about, and then I like to set aside a couple of beans to kind of purge out the grinder. There we go. All right. So there's our first one right there. So this will be number one. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to, at the end of this, I'm going to take this bag up. I don't feel like doing it on camera. But anyway, I am going to set this, boom, right there. So that's number one. And we're just going to go one to 14, like so. So we've got that weighed out. Next up is another onyx. It's Ecuador La Soledad Tipica Mejorado, the Mejorado, the, the, the tea oxidator by Pepe, my boy. This one is already open. You know I've already busted into this, and it's already taped down. So let's go ahead, weigh out 12 grams of that, and get some purge beans. So this one, uh, I, I'm excited I have a few Pepe's on the table today. I also bought Say's box of different processes and different varieties from him, his Cedar Wave and his uh, Anaerobic Gesha. So I'm excited to, to play around with those on this table, see one I'm digging. Let's see. Put this back. This will be number two. And I know that this is a lot of setup, but I wanted to show you what it looks like realistically when you're doing a cupping. Um, so for those who are watching the replay of this, you can obviously skip forward. Uh, but anyway, this next one is Pepe again, and it's the Finca Soledad uh, Cedra washed. So it's a wash Cedra, not the Cedra wave. Okay. I've not actually had this one from Pepe. Um, yeah. Very cool. Grown at 15, 15 meters above sea level in Ecuador. Pepe is a legend. If you have not watched it on my main channel, I do a video with Pepe, the producer from Fico Solidad. He is an incredible source of inspiration, just an incredible person. Okay, so we're going to get some beans to purge through. So as you can see, as I'm doing this, I am looking in here for any potential defects. So the, because my bowls are pretty big, big mouth, big lip, I'm able to kind of look in there and see. And if there are any, I'm definitely pointing them out because this is such a small sample size. Uh, and I'm not doing multiple bowls that it's important to uh, to rid those. All right. So this is bowl three. All right. So there's bowl three. We're going to keep pushing them like so. This one is the Pepe uh, Mejorado washed. So we already have this on the table, but it's about to be on the table again, but this time from Say. So this will be interesting to see the two roast profiles of the same coffee, the same green. So we open that up. I'm just, I'm just trashing on the floor. All right, so we got that, boom. So for those watching who are getting bored by all this, I want you to know this is what I do all of the time to, assure, to ensure that what I'm saying in on video, see there's a Quaker, that's why I pay attention. Get out of here, Quaker. We're not in the Northeastern part of the US, okay? So I am, I do this many, many, many times for many, many videos, uh, not just the cupping protocol, because that wouldn't make sense for a lot of what I do, but I set up tastings like this, which honestly are more laborious than cuppings. Cuppings are actually quite easy to set up. Um, and what, I mean, obviously, if you have a ton of coffees that you're having to reopen the bags and weigh and all that stuff, it can be a little laborious. But if you're only doing one to two coffees, it's very, very simple. The brew recipe is straightforward. You just dump water in there. Uh, and yeah, like I said, we'll walk through it in a bit. This one I've already torn into. This is the um, anaerobic washed Gesha from Pepe. Again, Ecuador, think of God, 15, 15 meters above sea level. I'm using my new cute little Akaya Pixis scale, which I adore. It was expensive as poop, but poop from like a queen, I guess, but um, definitely was expensive. All right, so we've got number, the next one down. Keeping these all in order back here. So this one was number five. Get in the box. So I bought that from my friends um, um, at Motors Coffee in Paris. 
All right, so now we're going to do, oh, speaking of Motors Coffee, we'll do their Gesha that they did in collaboration with Fried Hats in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. Okay. So this is a, a honey processed Gesha. Let's see what other info's on the box. I can't remember where they said it was from. It was a gift from Motors when I visited. It is Farm Reserve Lot number eight. Um, it actually doesn't say the country. It's a honey process, as I said. Uh, oh, it's Gesha Village. Okay. Duh. All right. So let me get some of that out. There we go. All right. So we have Motors right here. All right. And then we put these right here. All right. All right, so next we're gonna do, we'll do this one off so it's even on this up to seven. This is from um, uh, Replica Roasters. So I never tried Replica. I got this bag when I was at Telescope in Paris. Uh, very kind. Um, they they gifted me this bag and I was very, very happy about that. Um, so this is Nestor Lasso. So this will be a fruit bomb, but it is their semi-washed process. So Nestor Lasso from Huila, Colombia. Um, the farm is El Diviso. Uh, yeah, so we're going to weigh out our 12 here. Weigh out the 12. And I'll look at the chat here in a bit. I'm just getting all this going. If I look away now, it's going to exacerbate this process even more than it's been. Okay. So then as we move to the second row, I'm going to make a second row of coffees back here. Next up, we have Finca Debra Terroir. This is from Jameson Savage uh, in Panama. This is a... This was a really good coffee. I had it uh, at Substance Cafe. This is roasted by Substance. I had it at their cafe in Paris. And uh, wow, it was so very good. I had to buy as much as they were willing to give me. So they weighed out 100 grams. And uh, I, I spent a lot of money on it. Let's just say that. Um, oh, there's a little, oh, it's just chaff. Okay. It's just chaff covering a bean, making it look like a Quaker. All right. So this is a super lightly roasted coffee. Very nice. Okay, we're going to take a couple of purge beans. There we go. Don't need a lot. There's two types of people in the world. People who purge with like 30 beans and people who purge with like five. I am one of the five, okay? So get that straight. Next, we got the Kigari, which is a, a Kenya from Substance. This is, this is a really long video. And I'm sorry I didn't think it through. Because when I am out here copying, it's always by myself. And I'm not in a rush. That was my take on this is a story about a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole world. Um, yeah, that was a good one. I'm sure y'all are all like bumping at home. All right. So there's like eight beans to purge. That's all. We don't need more than that. No, all Gucci. All right. Make sure it's nice and sealed. All right. Next up, we have the Windlebow Brigade. I, I just went, I haven't bought Windlebow in like eight. I just went on and bought a lot. And then Tim was kind enough to send me um, a test of a Sedan Rame that he had been playing with. So this is something you won't be able to get. But I thought I would try it on camera. And if it's good, make you all jealous. Maybe you get it in the future. I don't know. But it's a test roast that he gave me. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. So first, I'm going to put the Karinga on the table. So I've already opened it. So it makes it a little easier. Karinga, Karinga. All right. Okay, a little purge beans there. All right, we're almost done weighing, guys. We're getting there. Echimo. Nope, we're going to do the uh, this Los Pirineos Pacamara because it's already open. Okay. All right. And I'd already pre-warmed my, my water, so it shouldn't take long to get back to temp. That is something I did think of ahead of time. I really didn't think this was going to take so long. I just wasn't thinking I should remember when doing a cupping of 14, you want to be prepared. Now, Echimo, Ethiopia washed. We're opening everything here. There's no, there's no unopened bag of coffee in my house. I don't care. Just got to seal it up. Seal it real nice. And then you get to watch it as it dies, a slow but glorious death. Okay, just a few beans for purge for purchases. <laughs> Purposes, you get it? Lots in the chat. Lots in the chat. We'll get to it here in a bit. We'll get to it here in a bit. All right. Now we got the Caballero, Caballero, I should say. This is an SL28. Um, produced by Marisebo. It's uh, in, in Honduras, of course. 
the famous farm that uh, Tim works with every year. All right, we're going to get this in there. Boop. Okay, a couple beans to purge. Just a few. Grinding is a lot faster. I have an EK-43 I use for my cuppings, and it is V-fast. So don't even worry about it. Not even a problem. It's going to be like before you can say hooray. All right. All righty. And here we go. We got a few of those for purge purposes. Okay. Here we are. In the last bag. Let's see. I'm going to kind of just tilt these to the side so they're still in order. There we go. Still in order, but I can fit them all in the back row. All right. So there we have all the bags. Here we have all the beans. Now it's time to start grinding. Uh, you see the motors. Yeah, the motors is here. I did my first company in my local coffee last week, and it was great. Yes. Also, what's up, 54 people from Patreon? The real ones. All right. Let me get this off. That's trash. And then we're going to turn this on. And, you know, I like to pre-spritz a few in a row just to make it a little easier on the grinding process. And then we're going to come over here. We're going to purge it out. I also like to get an extra bowl for that initial purgey purge. Okay. So, there we go. There's some chaff in there. There we go. All right. Straighten the bowl. Boom. Number one is done. Get those purge beans. Now what I'm doing is I'm transferring into just a blank cup and then going straight into the actual cupping bowl. There we go. Purge beans. All right. All right, this is the last one I already teed, so I gotta trip the next four. And I'm using the SSP brew birds in this bad boy. And we go uno, dos, tres, little one, little one, little one. Okay. Now these birds really show any potential flaw in the green or the roast itself, which can make some coffees disappointing that other people might really like for me just to be honest so um that they're very transparent very very transparent get in there get in there yes I'm just making sure get in there get in there da, da, da. all right we got seven down almost we're now at seven down There's a little something in there. There you go. Just piece of chaff sounds sounds like. I'm gonna go and turn these back on so they get back boiling. We're gonna get to the next row. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, beep, beep. There we go. All righty. You're playing with the big boys now. By the power of raw. Uh -oh. Don't want to let that little bean go. All right. Beep, beep. Let's get these out. There we go. Again, sorry about looking at my back. I am hope I'm having a good back day because y'all are seeing a lot of it right now. Apologies. Whoop. 
I am really excited though. My EK43 Omnia ships today. So that's exciting. That's exciting. Okay. Last one. Truly scrumptious. You're truly, truly scrumptious. All right. Nice. All right. Now the question is, do we also cup all the purged beans? It's probably real nice. I actually probably will brew that later. Because I'm a crazy person. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to just mix them all up. I don't know why I really even kept them in order. Um, but now we're going to mix them up. You ready? Watch as I make these this order disappear. We do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Just make sure that I don't topple them over because these are really kind of top heavy. Do do you do 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 be do do be do be do 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 be do be do. I'm just going to like put them in like. Random orders. Again, don't freak out. I have them marked on the bottom and the number corresponds with the order they are on the counter behind me. Okay. So yes, I'm not going to have any idea where any of these are. And hopefully you have lost it. I know y'all are at home trying to follow something, but y'all aren't following nothing because I certainly am. Uh, I'm not. And oh my goodness, I almost tipped one over in my, I like started to sweat a little bit because that would be annoying as heck. Okay. I feel like we're probably already pretty good and mixed up, but I just want to be super thorough. And, uh, I don't know where anything is. So maybe we just start. All right. I think this is good enough. All right. Now I'm just going to like put them maybe a couple more. I feel I like every time I'm sitting here going, did I only change them around on the same side? And then there's like a left, right bias because I didn't go all the way across enough. So yeah, here we go. Okay. I think, I think truly, I think truly we're good enough. Now we're just gonna like bring them in the center and then I'm going to lay them out randomly once more, just to make it even more random. Okay. So we're going to do, how far is this? I can go to there. I wonder if I can do 14 in a row. I don't think there's enough room on camera. Maybe there is. Let's see. We're going to do this, get the scissors out of the way. I don't want to hurt myself. I do that enough without scissors. Okay, I can cut there. Yeah, one, two, three. I don't know this one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One. No, we're gonna run out of room. Okay, we're gonna do two lines of it. That's not a problem. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh -huh. There's seven in the front row. We'll like off centrum, so I don't like dribble into the other one. So, oh yeah, for people with misophonia, you're not gonna like this video because I'm both singing and I'm gonna be slurping. Okay, I think that is probably money in the bank. Let's move them a little bit back this way. Okay. All right, I only took 24 minutes of prep. That's not bad. 
And I forget, normally when I do big cuppings, I have someone here tasting with me and we kind of split the duties. Okay, now what I got is I have my little notepad. I'm gonna go through and smell and make some preliminary notes. So the first thing you wanna do when you're cupping is, is observe the dry aroma. So go through and I'm just gonna sniff them. So I'm not gonna lift the cup up because I don't want you to see the bottom and I don't wanna see the bottom. No way for me to, but anyway. Now, the dry aroma is definitely the hardest thing to detect. So you just want to write down whatever comes to mind, even if it's super vague, like roasty or popcorn or like if it's really fresh or peanuts or or or, or you could say, you know, jasmine or, or whatever. You can go as advanced or as basic as you want. All valid. Um, in fact, if you have a note like roasty, it's probably helpful. Mm, I'm getting like little um what would you call it like um when you take a an orange and you burn it not burn it but caramelize it i guess caramelize orange we'll do caramelized orange get a little like yeah small florals i'm just gonna be very vague i can't sit here and scrutinize like i do for brewers competition that one is a lot wider. That one has like a melon thing going on. <gasps> no! <laughs> Take a straight edge and just scoop it right back in the bowl. We're good. All good. All Gucci to Gucci. Okay. I bet my face, I bet if you were to screen cap that, it was like, okay. There's a slight vegetal element to it. Slight vegetal. Slight veg. Ooh, that one's nuts. It's got like some... It's got like brown sugar and a little bit of like grapey thing. It's not great. Maybe like a... We're going to say like... I'm going to say purple. Purple. Brown sugar. Okay. This one, it's kind of tangy. It's like, that's like, that's like straight up, that's like straight up orange soda, Fanta. I'm putting Fanta, orange Fanta. Let's see. Whoa, that's funky. That is a, that is like one of the anaerobic things. Yep, that's one of the, that might be the anaerobic gesha or the, honestly, I don't know what else I have that's that funky on the table. So one of the purposes of this, do not try to guess the coffees. I, will, I, I shouldn't have said that because that will skew you and will bias you, okay? Just try to evaluate the coffee as is. Another discipline is trying to guess the coffee, but doing that as you're trying to assess the coffee on its own is going to skew you in what you think you're experiencing. So now I have a bias in my head that maybe this is the anaerobic gesha, and I'm going to look for qualities of an anaerobic gesha in this coffee. That's not good. That's biasing your experience, all right? To be as unbiased as possible, you don't want to play those games. You just want to, as objectively as possible, uh, cr like critique what is right in front of you, okay? So to be a better cupper, I should be like, it smells like grape booze. We'll just say grape booze. I'm saying it. I don't care. It's what it smells like. This one. That one doesn't have as much smell. That's It's hard going from that to this. This is why also in normal cuppings, like at roasteries, they'll put the funky stuff at the end because it can really skew your perception from cup to cup. Even though they'll do it blindly, they'll they'll mix up the end ones in order to uh, keep those out of the way for more clean coffees. There's like a, there's like a slight savory element to this. I would not be, I shouldn't say this, so I'm not going to say it but I'm already thinking it, so I might as well say it. I'm getting a slight savory, kind of like a tomato. I'm wondering if it's a Kenya or one of the Pepe's because Pepe's kind of tastes like Kenya's. It's not a bad tomato. It's like a sweet tomato, but still. Ooh, this is really nice. That's really floral. Ooh, nice. Floral with some citrus. Like orange blossom, honestly. That's what I should have written down. This is not as nice. Dang it, I can't help but like guess what the coffees are and it's really messing with my head. 
This always happens. And I'm trying to show you good things. And I'm just exposing myself as doing the things I preach against. But anyway. This one does have a little bit of like a like a nut aspect. Nutty. So I'm just going to put nutty for now. I'm taking too long on this. See, I normally do these long, long cuppings, but not in front of people. So uh, I don't think about your time whenever I'm cupping. So anyway, anyway, we're going to kind of speed through these. That's delicate. I'm just going to put delicate for now. We'll do a lot more on the taste because we just need to get water in these cups. It's actually a really nice note of jasmine there. That smells like refined sugar, actually. That one's really nice, really sweet. Ooh, that's another like, like, uh, like a savory punch in the nose, like a sweet savory, like again, like a cherry tomato. Ooh, this smells kind of bell peppery. Yep, I'm putting bell pepper. Now I have had many coffees that smell like bell pepper that have tasted delicious. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, if you were to ever eat a raw coffee cherry, like you pop it in your mouth, the seed, it tastes like bell pepper most of the time. This is really nice. I smell like red currants there. Okay. Now we're going to douse with water. So let's get these back to temp. Shouldn't take any time because they were boiling just a second ago. I got one spoon here. My other spoons. Okay, we got a few spoons. We'll just kind of decorate the table with spoons. And then this one's already at temp. So let me go ahead and get a timer going. And we'll start the pouring. All right. Now, if you notice, I'm not using a scale here. It's, um, it's mostly because I don't when I cup. Sue me. They don't have an origin either. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Ain't nobody got time for that. I don't want you doing this many. All right. This will probably handle just three, maybe four cups. We'll see if it can handle four. So I normally do like at 98, so just off boil a bit. Whoop, there we go. Let's see how much this will go. Those other ones just got to boil, but now they're going to cool off for a second. And hopefully I can finish this bowl with this one. Yes, I can. Perfect. With some to spare. Yeet! All right, so I'm going to lit off to let this cool a bit. Woo! It's going to be a little hotter than I want. Like I said, normally 98, 99, but this is closer to, well, I guess it's not technically at 100 because it would be uh, breaking the stream if it was at boil. So we're probably right at temp with this. So one of the ideas about pouring is you want to really disturb the grounds, okay? You're trying to get all the agitation that you really need in this. Now, when we take the spoon to it to break the crust, we're going to give it some more edge. But uh, okay, I'm going to shut the lid now to finish these up. So I think we're probably at a solid temp. All right, get in there, baby. Maybe I got one more. Did I measure these this water out perfectly or what? Five more and I got a thousand left, baby. Whoops, little spill. I was trying to be fancy, turning around mid when mid pour. All right. Oh, the sound of hot water hitting grounds. Not much like it. And there we have it. Lovely. Woo. I love the look of crust that is sitting on my counter. Crusty counter. All right. Well, I need to get a little bit of water for like washing the, the stuff. Let's see how much we have left. Oh, my Lanta. I dose this water like money in the bank. All right. We're going to, I'm just going to fill some tap water for rinsing. Um, Rinsing the spoons, a little bit of water damage, but it's not going to affect it. Not going to be a big deal. I'll wipe it off with a towel anyway. It's nice and hot. Uh, let's see how much water we got left here. Nice. Okay. All right. And we are almost at break time. We're a minute out. So you can go during this and you can sniff. And I would recommend writing down what you're smelling again. No one has an added vanilla note. Ooh, that was nice now. It's like sweet tarts. 
Ooh, that one has like cinnamon about it. I'm actually, that's such a strong cinnamon. I'm adding it. It's nice. Ooh, that has like a mineral mineral quality to it. Earlier I said delicate, now it has like mineral minerality. This one's funky. It's a time, 15 seconds. I'm sticking with that savory. There's something like noodly savory in it. This is giving me like a, a ginseng type thing going on. I had bell pepper earlier, ginseng, that kind of checks out. Four minutes. All right, nothing hugely different there, still smooth. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a spoon and I like to do three or four big kind of pushes into it. And essentially what you're doing is you are just disturbing those grounds for some further extraction. But you're also breaking up the crust that may have formed on the top layer. So any floaters can go down, but also it releases some of the aroma that's been trapped behind that crust. Might slow down a bit so they all have their adequate four minutes. I feel like I'm breaking faster than I poured. All right. That one on the break actually smelled a lot better. Wait, was it? Oh, wait, no, never mind. It was this one that was the not great one. I was like, that's now smelling really good. That's this one that was weird. <sighs> okay. I don't need that boiling. That's just to rinse stuff. Yep, that was a cinnamon. Okay. I smelled it again. Oh, there's a little paperiness on that one. Number eight, nutty was my first note. I'm putting papery now at the wet. So yeah, you're just kind of distinguishing, you're just writing your uh, impressions. That one has a bit of nuttiness now. That one is that weird thing, and yeah. Okay, Sa that savory one. God, that is that is such a weird uh, aromatic experience. Now there's a little like, maybe clove. That's one that's bell pepper, ginseng, clove. It's very odd. Not in a bad way though, not at all. It's very interesting, I should say. Interesting. All right, now what I'm doing is I'm going to clean off these cups. So let me get some water here. Ta. Ta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape with two spoons. You like to get, you want to get like two spoons that are similar head size. Uh, I found that to be the easiest, but essentially, and that's going to be my waste bucket. You're just scraping off that top layer of film and or grounds that have uh, accumulated on top after the break. Easy peasy. Since most of these are super lightly roasted coffees, there's not going to be much to scrape away. Uh, so you just, you know, scrape in case there are any floaters, but and get that film away. I don't want to, I don't want to slurp that uh, that crema like stuff on top. You can if you want. Yeah, the, these normally there's a lot more crusties lying around because really dark, darkly roasted coffees tend to have more floaters. Uh, but these are all, like I said, you saw the roasters. They're all very lightly roasted coffees. And in fact, I think that the Motors one from Fried Hats, they requested to go even lighter than he normally does. Granted, the lightest on the table is definitely the stuff from Substance. They, um, they're like, they're pretty dang light. They're like, uh, around where Picky Chemist is. Um, Say is definitely very, very much up there as far as lightest on the table. Though I will say, whoops, I just washed in the wrong one. So we got to rewash in the clean one. Thank goodness I didn't put anything in it yet. You don't want to cross contaminate as best as you can. All 
obviously Wendell Bow's very light. Yeah, all these are quite lightly roasted, but it doesn't matter if you have dark or light at home. This protocol will stand the test of differences. Okay. Whoop. There's just a wee bit of film right there I don't want. All right, once we get these all clean, I'm gonna tidy up the space and we will look at chat as we're waiting for it to cool down. I've been saying we'll look at chat and I haven't yet, but we're going to right now. Okay, so we got all that done. Those spoons to the side, spoons to the side. Let's put these waters, get them refilled for the actual cupping. Wipe up the little spills I made. Listen to the plane going overhead. Where's a rag? There's one. I'll pick it up with my monkey toes. Okay, here we go. Don't knock anything over. Okay. All right. Ugh, I'm going to move this because I really want to get that little stain. Be careful. There we go. Okay. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. Now we wait. We're at almost 10 minutes, so I got about five minutes, but let's see. What is the setting on the EK43 for that anyway? And if you know what micrometer is that? So I use for this, I'm setting 10 on one that has 16 numbers. That is just past or just before nine o'clock, in between eight and nine. So like 8.30 um, is what I'm using for this cupping set, set um, with my brew that are uh, calibrated to chirp at zero. What will be the grind size for cupping for Pietro Pro Brews? I would say around eight. Um, and again, for V60 recipe, at least there are no glass V60s around to break the sun. That's true. Oven or bean mixes can be fun. I agree. I bet they'll end up in order of 1 to 14. That would be hilarious. Slurp City, here we go. Who's going to make the slurp montage video? Oh, God. Hansel Hendrick will make the slurp super cut. If the uh, fresh buckle up, the orange flu flambe. Orange flambe. That's what I was thinking of, actually. Yes. Have you ever been to Electric L Ladyland, Jimi Hendrix? Oh, I get it. Lance Hendricks, Jimi Hendrix, all along the watchtower. Okay, let's see. Sacrifice must be made. Huh. Isn't great booze just wine? You, <laughs> I was thinking like great liquor, not <laughs> like uh, cognac. I should have just said cognac or, or Armagnac. Um, hey, from Berlin. What list of recipe would you use for coming? For this, I'm using, uh, what did I put in? I put in 35 ppm of potassium uh, bicarbonate. I put in um, 40 ppm of magnesium chloride, and I put in 30 ppm of calcium chloride. Um, I've super my own, and it's kind of sad. Oh, oh no, that's no good. S since that stream with Scott, I've super learned my one local roaster bakes all their coffees, and it's kind of sad. Oh no. What temperature water do you uh, tend to use? I use around 98, 98 for cupping. All right, so this timer's over. Uh, because it only goes to 10 minutes. So I might I might attempt to slurp the first one. I should probably spit. I know that's gross, but I it is, you know, I, when I'm filming this, it's like 7, 6 p.m. What time is it? 6 p.m. Um, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a picture. I will be discreet, but be aware. I will be discreet, but uh that's, that's life, baby. That's life. All right. So when we get here, all we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit in our spoon and we're aerating it as much as we can to get to our factories. We're trying to spritz it over our tongue, activate all the taste buds, the senses, yada, yada, yada. You know, all the pseudoscience that people spew, whatever it is. No, there's obviously science there. You should check out Coffee Sensorium. Fabiana is an incredible uh, scientist working down in Brazil. Uh, does a lot of stuff with sensory sciences. Um, and her and um, Veronica made a... Um, a, um, a sense kit that you should definitely check out and I can show you in the discord. Uh, anyway, we're going to go ahead and go and we're just risk burning my tongue because I'm impatient and I've already taken your 45 minutes of your time. So we're going to try to do this in 15, 20 minutes. That's probably going to turn into longer, but um, hopefully I like to have an hour cut off. So we're going to see what happens with that. But anyway, let's see. Okay. That's nice. It's a smidge roasty, like not roasty. It's like you can detect the roast is what I sh should say. Smidge roasty. 
It could also be just that it's really uh, 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 fresh. It's got really nice, like, orange candy about it, though. Orange candy. I need the, these cups. Let's see. Why do I have a pen in my hand? Oh, because I was writing stuff down. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move on. Mm. That one has a bit of vanilla in it. It's a really smooth coffee. Really smooth. Like a green melon, maybe like a honeydew, maybe. I'm going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to try to do them all while they're hot and then go back through the cooling. That one is roasted quite well. These two, either it was a little too fresh or I just didn't like the roast as much. This one's roasted. Mm -hmm. You got definite grapes right off the bat and some white flour that's lingering in my mouth. Number four. Okay, we're on four now. Oh God. That's still the right one. Mm -hmm. Back to back, we have grapes. This one has orange and grape. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, this is one I said orange Fanta. That makes sense. It's got like um, mandarin. It's got white grape. This is the booze one. Yep, there it is. Great booze. <laughs> I knew right when that touched my tongue. You! That's like cognac. I'm going to say cognac. It reminds me of the GXO from... Um, from Cafe Grand Hot La Esperanza. Actually, a better note is Purple Jolly Rancher. Great Jolly Rancher. Jeez Louise. That is what that is. That is confection. Good news. Yep, this is the one that smelled weird. It tastes a whole lot better than it smelled. That's kind of flat. Not much going on. Maybe a smidge papery. Mm. Might be a smidge like. The acidity is very low. Low acidity. There's not much florals there. The sweetness is pretty low too. Hmm. It's not my favorite. As it's cooling, it's definitely getting better. When it was hot, it was not that great though. It's already cooling as I'm sitting here slurping it. it actually has a really pleasant aftertaste, which is odd. It's like refreshing and uh Aftertaste is like, it's like when you drink a really nice water at the end. It's very refreshing and kind of cooling when you breathe in, which is nice. Okay, we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one. This has a really nice citric acidity. It's really popping. Almost like tang. We're going to just move on. I keep taking too long. That one is not. Uh, that one, honestly, I do not. That's This is probably my least favorite. The 
I'm writing baked. I think this one's baked. I, the, the aroma and the wet aroma, I put nutty and papery. And it's just not, there's not much going on in it. It's just kind of, honestly, it tastes a little, I don't, I doubt, no, with these coffees, I'm very confident it's not past crop. Very confident. Um, in fact, I would bet a lot of money it's not. Uh, but it has some of those similarities. It's got like some of the hay going on. Mm. That one's much better. That one I put delicate mineral. This it's it's actually popping. It's vibing now. Mm -hmm. Get some like lemon lime, like le lemongrass. That's the thing. That's nice. I'm gonna go ahead and move on though. I don't want to take too much time. Mm. Again, very floral. First thing I notice, I put jasmine for the aroma. Very floral. Mm. Mm. It's definitely juicy. I'm just going to keep going, though. This one has a nice, like, sugar cane sweetness. Like, it has that little bit of green going on about it. Shoot, I forgot which number I was on. It's 14, 13, 12. We're on this one. Nope, I was on 11. I was like, that does not taste like the same coffee. <laughs> Let me recount. There it is. There's some kiwi popping in there, along with that green sugar cane. This one, this one smelled savory, and it's still there. Like that tomato is there. Cherry tomato is definitely there. But let me tell you. Also, it's heavy rhubarb. Let's see what this next one is. Hmm. Is bell pepper on the taste too? Yeah, that's the bell pepper smelling one. Mm. This last one's flat. That might be baked. Mm. There's a little. Mm. No, there's some grapefruit in there, and there is some currant. It may not be baked, but it definitely, I think this coffee, this green, seems like it could be better than it's tasting right now. Like when if you kind of try to taste through what's going on. All right, we're just going to take a little quick run through. As it sits there and cools, that acidity becomes a lot more present, a lot more in your face. We're down to 32 viewers. People don't like me rambling about cupping, do they? Not as exciting. Sorry, I'm not doing as much Q&A today. Um, I just thought this would be an important video to get out there. It probably won't get many views, but I don't care. Um, this is, like I said, I think it'll really enhance your brewing at home. And I know it's a difficult thing to wrap your head around. It's difficult to approach and it's it's a little esoteric maybe um, and looks kind of snobby. But honestly, if you get into a rhythm where you're sorting your coffee, you're getting a small dose, you're tasting it. You can sit there and go, this would be nice for espresso. This would be nice for filter. So, in fact, what I'm going to do on this run is I'm going to say what I think it's nice for. We're not going to do many notes. Like, I could sit here and write 20 notes for every coffee uh, because that's what I do in brew competitions when I'm coaching people. I help them write 20 to 30 flavor notes for a coffee um, to present in front of a set of calibrated judges. And honestly, uh, Harris can, can speak to this, who I helped uh, win regionals tiers in a row in Norway, but I'm pretty good at the flavor note section of um, being calibrated with the judges. Um, normally give 25 to like 30 notes and we'll get maybe all but three right with the set of calibrated judges. So we could sit here and wax on and as I sit here and slurp and really dissect the flavors, but um, I don't think that's as helpful and it's more snobby than, than anything. So instead what I'm going to do now is I showed you one pass through it and kind of talked simple words like, oh, it's great. Oh, it's um, roasty. Oh, it's uh, papery. Simple things like that. Uh, purple, whatever it is, green. 
Um, now we're going to kind of taste and decide if it would be based on mouthfeel, based on a, if there's a stringency or whatever, uh, where it would be best um, displayed in your bar. Okay. This coffee tastes like it has acidity that wants to come out, but it needs to be forced. Uh, the body is okay, but I think this would actually do pretty well on espresso. So I'm going to put um, on the first one. It also is a smidge roasty, so I think if you did a lower temp espresso with this, I think it would really shine. So I'm going to go and write this down so whenever we do the reveal, we can see which one I was talking about this on, and I'm going to actually make some for myself later. Um, I'm going to say low temp espresso. I think it would be really nice with that one. This one's delicate. It's tea-like. It's got that melon thing going on. I think this would be a lovely, lovely, lovely filter. Or if you want to do a soup-style espresso, I think it would be really nice with that. So I'm going to put soup slash filter. Next one. Okay. This one has that little bit of a um, roast forward type taste, not in a bad way, but it's definitely a bit more developed than I would probably want for filter. This I think would shine as espresso. I think something like, um, in fact, I think you could do something like a lever style shot with this coffee, not necessarily with the first one, but with this one would curb some of the bitterness uh, with that delaying at the end. But I think you need to bring up a high pressure in order to really get the full expression of this coffee. So I'm gonna put lever here um, for number three. Okay, this one can go either way. This one's got that crazy, like, Fanta thing going on. I think it depends on your style. I would probably do this as espresso because I'd want a smaller amount of it because um, it's so, like, in your face. So I wouldn't want to sip a full, like, you know, 200, 200, 250 mil filter with it. I think it would be it would be really concentrated in espresso, but I think a lot of people would really dig that on Spro. So I'm going to put Omni on this one. I think this one would, would, would shine well either way. One, two, three, four, five. Mm. This is that this is the crazy one. So that one is in your face. This one is also Omni. It's like the previous cup, but on steroids. This one, honestly, though, I would do filter. And I would probably, I know that sounds kind of weird that I said this one would be Omni and this one filter. Even though this one's crazy, it doesn't have, it's more um. It's louder, but it has more complexity to it, if that makes sense. So this one is not as loud as this um, main note is, but this one kind of centers around, around that main note. This one also has other areas that can be explored really well, and I wouldn't want that kind of captured in a small espresso. I think it would still be really nice as espresso. So it's like, I I'm going to say filter, but I'm going to put like slash omni. So it's filter first for me. Um, filter slash omni. Oh, shoot. I'd already written filter. So there it is, Omni. I wrote on number six, which is the one I was not digging, I think. Yeah. This one, I'm doing my concentrated air press recipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one, I'm definitely doing filter. No question. That is... That is what I want in a filter. Essentially, it's got some pop and citrus. It's got florals. It's got white flowers. It's got um, some nice sweetness like panela, like not as intense as brown sugar. Um, black tea. It's it's a solid. This next one, <clears throat> I'm doing the concentrated air press again. Um, number nine. Definitely filter for me. You could do soup. People, with all these that I'm going really hard on filter, it's because I have a heavy bias skewed towards filter. But a lot of these, you could do a soup style shot if you really like really delicate coffees. If I'm tasting something that's really delicate, I'm going filter. But you can also, you know, go soup on that. All right. Number 10, so seven, eight, nine, 10. Mm. That one is a kick in the mouth and that would be incredible Omni. But honestly, I'm probably leaning espresso because I want those full expressions of what is in that because that is juicy. That is juicy, juicy. Um, shoot. Did I mess up the numbers again? 14, 13, 12, 11. 
shoot. Ten is okay. Crap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going to go back to Tinks. That's the last note I wrote down. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good. Eleven. This one's definitely more nuanced. Uh, let's see. I wrote refined sugar, sugar can, kiwi. Yeah, more nuanced. So I'm doing either filter or soup, but I'm definitely just putting filter. I don't think that would be as good as soup on soup. All right, number 12, yes. Mm. That one is really coming to its own. There is a save. There is an there is a vegetal element about it that I'm not digging. But there's also with that vegetal quality, there are some florals that have popped up out of nowhere. Um, I would like to really just uh, I would like to throw this on espresso. I think. I think. I think. What is that? There's something so familiar in this that's so odd. And I can't tell if I really enjoy it or if I don't, or if it's just like confounding me. But there's definitely a heavy vegetal element in that. This one now has like a black pepper thing going on. I guess I'll do my air press on this. Number 13. Mm, that's definitely filter, but could also be espresso. That's like grapefruit, nuanced. It's nice. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see which is which. The time has come. The time is here. So near we stirring the blood in their veins. And yet beware. Okay. This one is number two. Number two. This is the Fica uh, Solidad from Pe Pepe. Very nice. Okay, this one. Uh, yeah, I said. Uh, let's see. Shoot. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna. So I don't forget. I'm gonna put it with it for now. But I'm gonna write down. Uh, actually, I'll just take another piece of paper. This is probably smarter. Number one was Pepe Onyx. So that one I said would be good at low temp espresso, smidge roasty, orange candy. Uh, orange small florals. Yeah, that honestly is perfect. Yeah, orange blossom, white tea, honey uh, were, were their taste notes of my compadres there. So that uh, that checks out. And honestly, Onyx is a little more developed and I do detect roast pretty okay, uh, pretty often. And I do like low temp espresso. And that's literally what I wrote on there was low temp espresso would be banging on that. Number eight is the second one. So eight is Finca Debra Terroir. Okay, number two is from Substance, and it's Finca Debra. Uh, so this is uh, Jameson Savage, Debra, um, Terroir. And this one I said was melon. It was slightly vegetal. Uh, it has vanilla, some green melon. Uh, so it was very light florals. Uh, there's citric acidity about it. And I said this would be good as soup and filter. So that checks out uh, because I had a really nice... Um, filter with that at substance, like really, 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 really nice. All right. Number three is 11. So, oh shoot, I should have kept them there actually, because I have to use them to count. Okay. It's number 11. So, eight, okay. Yeah. 11, eight, nine, 10, 11. So Los Pirineos from Tim Windlebow. Tim Windlebow, Los Pirineos. So number three was purple, brown sugar, grapes, white flour. I would put that on a lever, uh, lever style shot. Yeah, that checks out. I'm definitely going to pull that on my Cremina soon or on my ACS Vostic. Honestly, that's probably better. Number four is number 14, which is the last coffee, which is the Sedan Ramay from Wendelbow. 
Wow, that one was nuts. I am actually going to really enjoy that. And I've not, typically I do not like Sedan Rame, but this one I said was like that orange Fanta, like orange grape thing, Mandarin white grape. Um, th this I was saying was Omni, could be filter or espresso equally good. Um, this thing is a little more crazy than what I normally like. And honestly, Sedan Rame is typically pretty herbal for me. But this one... Sorry, you don't get to taste it. All right, number five. This was the really funky funk funk. Number five. I was right. Gesha, anaerobic wash. I said I should not, I should not try to guess because then it's going to skew what I'm saying. Say Anna washed Pepe. So that one I said filter or omni, which I brewed it as a filter. My first cup and it was gray. One, two, three, four, five, six. So next one is six, and this is number six. Wow, there we go. That lines up. Six is six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's the Motors Gesha Village. Six was Motors Gesha Village. And this one I said was savory, flat, smidge papery, low acidity. Uh, this was one I'd say I'd put on my AeroPress. Um, I do remember not really enjoying the brew they made me in the bird when I was there. Um, it just didn't taste very good. I can't remember. Is this the one that I said tasted like old, uh, old crop? No, I don't think so. I think it was that one. I said tasted like old crop. Yeah, definitely it was this one I remember. Let me see. Yeah. Woo! I didn't mean to swallow that. Okay. So number seven is number 13. So the penultimate one, which is Caballero from Wendelbow, Tim Wendelbow Caballero. Uh, this one I said was floral citric, cinnamon, popping citric tang filter. I will say this. I did not enjoy Tim's Caballero, uh, Caballero last year or the Caballero Geisha. In fact, I bought a few bags of the Geisha and I ended up giving them away after a few brews because I didn't enjoy it. This was nice. As you saw, as it cooled, I got really excited. Remember, I got that cinnamon note and I was like, you. That's why I'm remembering it. In fact, I'm going to take another sip right now. I'm excited I have this bag. Also, to be clear, before we before we get to the final ones, um, I want to point which ones I paid for and which ones were free, just to be fully clear. And obviously, it was just blind, so it shouldn't play a bias. But And I could shoot myself the work for Onyx. Obviously, the Onyx bags, I work for Onyx, so I just got them. Um, say I paid for full price, 160 euros for the box of three. Motors, I got for free. Um, this, uh, for Nestor Lasso from Replica, I got for free from Telescope. Um, I paid full price for the Finca Debra and the Kagiri from Substance. I paid full price for the Coringa, for the Echimo and the Caballero. Um, the Los Peroneos was sold out online and I messaged him and said, Hey, is there any way you have any left? And he had one sitting on his bookshelf in his office. And so he just threw it in my order and then he did throw in the Sedan Rame as well. But I did pay full shipping and everything for the other ones. I actually bought four bags from Wendelbow. I also bought a backup Coringa. So uh, there. Okay. I just wanted to get that out in the open. All right. Number eight. What is number eight? I'm very curious because uh, it's number nine. Nine. Seven, eight, nine. It's the Kigari. Is that right? There's no way. I had it on espresso and it was not that, I will say it was decent while it was hot. When I had it on espresso at, at substance, <laughs> could not have convinced me that was a Kenya coffee. Let me double check that number. I don't know if I believe that. Number eight is nine. Yeah, that's nine. That's a nine. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the Kigari. It is. Well, poo. That's a bummer and a half. All right. Um, it's not what it tastes like at the shop. It did finish poorly, and I told him that uh, when I was sipping it. I didn't finish my espresso. When it was hot, it was pretty good. When it got cool at all, when it warmed up, it was not good anymore. But it was something I would have shot as espresso, and I would have enjoyed it. But I did not, did not enjoy it when it was cool. It tasted like that. Ten. This one's number ten. So ten is the Karinga Christmas edition from Wendell Bow. 10 is Coringa. So number nine was on mine. Delicate mineral lemongrass filter. Boom. There it is. I'm surprised I only got lemongrass. I want to taste that again now that it's cooled. It doesn't have a typical Kenya profile. I'll tell you that right now. Number 10. 
for you. I guess it is number 10. Okay. Yeah, I definitely got floral. He has he has black currants though, and I don't get black currants. I wish I did. Maybe it's just uh maybe it's the water. That's the other thing is I'm using the water because the coffee tastes delightful. It is not intense. I can definitely mess with my water. I'll lower the, the bicarbonate when I'm brewing this. Um, and maybe even lower extraction, and it will probably shine a bit better on filter then. Um, yeah. So good news is, is though, I was scared it might be a little baked because last year the Karinga was a little baked. The Kenyas weren't that great last year, but this is this is this makes me pretty happy. Uh, the roast profile. Um, number ten, I said was jasmine and floral and nice. Let's see. That's number twelve. So it's another Wendell Bow. 10, 11, 12. That's the Echimo. Ooh, I like that one. That was nice. That one was nice. Oh, yeah. I like that one a lot. Number 11, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is number three. That is the Pepe Ecuador Washed. The Cedra. Cedra Washed from Say. Pepe Cedra Washed Say. Okay, so that was 11, and that was refined sugar, sugar cane, kiwi. I said it would be great on filter, uh, which that makes sense. That that green could also be green apple, which is cedra as cider. And I was telling you, I was tasting sugar cane, that green, that kiwi. Um, definitely, uh, I bet you I will taste, let's see, 11, 11. I bet you there's some malic. <laughs> yeah, now that's in my head, I definitely taste green apple. But anyway, we'll move on. Number one is 12. Number one, that's the Ethiopia Yaye Chirico Red Honey from Onyx. So this one also, by the way, Pepe, I said was filtered. Yeah, I said that. This one was savory. It had Weird. This one I thought was a Kenya. I'm not going to lie to you. I really was thinking this was a Kenya and I allowed it to mess with my head. I thought maybe this was the Karinga from substance and so because honestly this tasted similar to the beginning of my espresso from them and this one is the one that has that uh yeah this one's weird but i like it it's um it had that like little bit of savory element like a cherry tomato and it tastes it's actually sort of similar to a kenya coffee which is wild i like that i mean it's solid and i said this would be good on um espresso which checks out. I love eating Onyx coffees as espresso. I love it because we're an Omni roaster. So we roast a little bit more developed because we don't do a filter and espresso roast. And normally that turns to espresso for me and filters are like a little lighter. Dead on baby. And I'd never tried that. That was my, I opened it live. That was the first time I've ever tried that coffee. I'm uh, pretty stoked about that. That's a good one that we have on our roster. I'm excited about it. So 13, I was not a fan of. It had some interesting things going on. It says number seven. Okay, so this was the Nestor Lasso from Repub from Nestor from what is their name? Replica, Replica from Replica. Um, yeah, I was not digging this. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Which is wild because this coffee I had it uh, roasted by both um, Carl Rosell and Scott Rayo, and both of those were much better. Scott's was really nice, actually. Um, I think I still have a little left. Let me make sure it's the same coffee. I don't want to say I had the same one roasted and it not be the same. Let me make sure. I think it is. It's probably different green. It's probably different green. Um, anyway, um, I did not like that. Not, not, not good. That one I said would be my AeroPress recipe. So was number eight, which was the Substance Kigari. And so was number... Six, which was the Motors Gesha Village. So number 14, that leaves one left. Which one have I not said? I think it's the last, though, the Tipica Mejorada from Say. It's got to be, because I don't think we've done that one yet, eh? Number four, yeah, that's Tipica Mejorada from Say. Yeah, so it's this one. Wait, four, yeah. Tipica Mejorada from Say. Tipica from Say. Pepe. So this one, I said, was red currant. It tasted flat on the cupping table. 
which is actually kind of funny because I was just talking with a friend of mine who cupped um, onyxes beside um, this one and said that um, said a similar thing that it was kind of flat side by side. Um, ours does have more acidity, I think onyxes does, but it is a little. It, it does have a, 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 that roast taste that I noted when I was going through all of these. Definitely did. Um, anyway, heck yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, I hope that it was informative. Uh, <laughs> It was a long time though, hour 15, so it may not have been your favorite thing in the world, but I hope it was informative. Hope it was helpful. I'm going to try to speed through some of this chat and then we'll break it down. Um, let's see. I'm definitely going to do this when I get home. Heck yeah, I'm still here. Thank you, Spencer. Learning lots. Excited to start cupping. Heck yeah, I'm still here. Great for this video. Thank you. The one I tried this was just make sure you like the video when I post it. Maybe leave an extra comment uh, to help boost it a little bit after I make it public. Uh, that would really help. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Uh, and subscribe to this channel. Uh, the one I tried with this with super just uh, generic coffee smell and flavor as well as just drying all over my mouth naturally. Be up to two weeks off roast. Yeah, see, that's very fair to, that's fair. And you know, you don't like it. That's the thing is if you're tasting something, you don't need to stress about the notes are if you don't like it. If you don't like it in cupping, you're likely not going to like it elsewhere. Maybe you could make something that is palatable with my, that, again, I'll do a video on this actually. I think it'll, bad coffee. Uh, that's That'll be the title of the video. Um, and it'll be that, that truncated air press recipe. But, um, and I'll, I'm gonna give credit to Tetsu because I definitely, essentially, I take one of his uh, recipes um, and, and change it a bit. I'm very new to cupping and I came in late. What's the uh, benefit of a cupping overdoing them all filter, for example? Is it rep? Yes. So I, I, I said this earlier, but I'm gonna say it again because you're in the chat and you deserve an answer. Also, I started using mustache wax today. How's that one? Um, my wife got it to me for Christmas. Hey, oh. Um, so yes. Um, which was the ones I love the most? I really enjoyed. Um, actually, I'll remember based off the roaster better. Um, the, oh, the, yeah, the, uh, well, number one was really nice, of course. Has that little roast. I wonder if it's gone out with. Nope. Roasting is still there. Um, number two is good. That was the Finca Deborah. It was solid. Still good. Oh, the sweetness has really increased there. Oh, yeah. So cupping, it's re re uh, repeatable. You're getting what kind of the, the substance of the coffee is. If you're cupping it uh, and there's a note that's potential in it, it's going to be there. You just have to really fight for it because the body may be a little heavier than what you're used to. But it's going to be reproducibility, efficiency, no channeling. Um, if there's astringency, it's not from the extraction. It's from the coffee itself. So there's a lot of things that you can get in this that you won't be able to get in other brew methods. So, um, yeah, number seven was nice. That was that Caballero that got better. <laughs> The say in Arabic wash, that was a crazy one. Sedan Ramey. That was pretty nice. Um, let me try to think what my favorite ones. I really liked number 10, the Echimo. Eight, nine, that, that's not 10, that's 11. Which that, I mean, number 11 is good too. That's the Pepe. Mm. Echimo fire. That's so floral. That is a good one. Recommended. Um, 12 was. That really unique Ethiopia honey, really unique. Apricot. It is heavy apricot. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. Apricot. It's heavy apricot on that finish. Heavy, 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 heavy apricot. Um, heavy. I, I needed to say it again. Number nine was Karinga, which was good. There comes the more typical. Can now I can definitely tell it's a tenure. A Timya. Oops, that was a Freudian slip. The Kenya kind of like current is now coming out. Um, it's nice. When it was hot, though, it is not there. Oh, at least in cupping. It might whenever there's less body and you can kind of perceive some of that acidity a bit better um, in filter. But yeah, okay, sorry. I got very much to learn by this. Thank you, Justin. Uh, can you remind us what your concentrate air press method was? Yeah, so I'll go and tell you here. It's 30 grams of coffee ground super coarsely, super coarsely, like you think it's coarse, go coarser. 120 grams of water at about 80 degrees Celsius. You're going to stir the ish out of it for about 10, 15 seconds. Then you're going to put, um, you're going to, uh, and do inverted, do inverted. Uh, and then you're going to put the cap on. You're going to let it sit to about a minute, minute and a half. And then you're going to flip and press for about 20 seconds. Um, and don't go past the hiss. And then once you do that, 
Um, you're going to bypass it by about 80 grams of water at drinking temp. Uh, taste it. And if you need to add more water, add more water. But this is going to maximize the acidity in the coffee on those coffees that might be baked or might be old or might be over roasted. Um, the low temp is going to disallow a lot of the bitterness that comes out with high temp. Um, it's very unorthodox, but it's very nice. That's what I used and dominated in compulsory and brewer's cup with. Let's see. What is a soup style shot? A soup style shot is literally what it sounds like. A thinner type of shot. So a huge ratio, like one to five or a turbo shot or the dose, uh, extract a mundo dose or um, like a, I guess you could call a spro for that, but that's more filter coffee, just a massive like one to 10, one to 12 ratio. Um, anything like that where it's going to make a very soupy style shot uh, is what I mean by soup. Uh, so essentially, I'm saying not a standard espresso. Standard espresso on those ones I pointed out, I don't think would taste very good. You'd need to get it more soupy, more thin, because you would need more um, extraction. Um, is the audio choppy for anyone else? Oh, crud. Is it choppy? <gasps> no. No. Okay, well, I'm sorry if it's choppy. I'm gonna go and hop off. I hear my kids getting louder inside. So we're gonna hop off now. Thank you for uh, watching. And um, I hope, I hope again, I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this here in a bit. Uh, for those of you who are watching this on the replay, I guess it's already posted, but thank you so much for watching. Check out my Patreon for those of you watching in the future. If you want to get in on these live chats, normally I interact more with the chat, but today, obviously I was a little busy. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your year and brew something tasty. Cheers.